Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Conquer the Clutter, November the 23rd. It is four days to one month D-Day, where I'm off to Uganda on your behalf to show you that life is not simple. All right. There are challenges and God willing, there are answers that we can implement. All right. Okay. So today, however, we're going to zero in a little further on what's happening beyond our immediate awareness. All right. And how that sometimes can set us up for stalling out. Okay. This is a precursor to the reason, the one of the biggest reasons I'm actually going to Uganda. <coughs> Sorry, folks. <clears throat> and that is you folks telling me, I hear you. It makes sense. But I just can't seem to get up and get going. I just, when there's a challenge, I just can't seem to overcome it. I can't make myself. I can't find my motivation and the energy that goes along with it. That's what I'm hoping to demonstrate because there will be lots and lots and lots of times at my age <laughs> in Uganda in the heat. And I just found out an additional challenge will be do you know how many variety of snakes there are in the jungle do you know how much i hate snakes all right i have this image of trekking and having a python fall out of the tree on my shoulders that's my image all right okay what's the security code for that we actually, we actually also have two armed guards. Okay, now I was told that that was because the elephants in this particular jungle, okay, are more aggressive. Actually, what it turns out to be is more likely there are raiders from Rwanda and the Congo. Um, so, yeah, anyway. This is going to be an adventure. And things that happen can stall us out. So the adventures have already, and the challenges have already started. <clears throat> I'm going through my bag. I have one bag that may go missing in action. That will have the stuff, the bulk of the stuff. The other will be my carry-on. And I have a small backpack as well. And I was just making sure that everything, in case I get busy, everything that I absolutely need is in the carry-on. And I leaned forward too far because the other bag is big to zip it. And I go snap at the back of my knee. And I went, oh my heavens, now what? All right, so it's a sprain. And as I said before, I started to record seven o'clock this morning, overcoming the challenges already started. I was at physio. There's good news. It's a sprain. It's not a rupture or anything else. Although I'll have to tell you, I had to fight back the, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, of all the things physically now already to be facing physical challenges. So anyway, it never, it, it rarely, 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 lesson number one, when you have that flood of, oh my heavens, this is it, this is zero hour. It almost never turns out to be as bad as you fear. That's lesson number one. Okay, and I had to fight that one myself as well. Like, oh, please, no more. At least let me get to the jungle before this starts. All right. So there's that moment of stalling out. All right. When something's happening just beyond your awareness. All right. What happens to you? What is the sense you experience? Anybody here not experience this? That sense of being overwhelmed. 
And when you're overwhelmed and you feel yourself kind of sinking in it a bit, you know, it's like mud. It's amazing how that can suck the energy out of your motivation. You get distracted. All right. So I'm going to heavily quote Dr. Perry here directly. And it is the next little tiny bit will be from the book, What Happened to You? All right. From Coping to Heal. That's the that's the name of the chapter in case you get that book and you want to look this up. And it's also from the healing workbook. Now, they didn't create the healing workbook. I'm just going to get it for you in case you weren't here last week. This is a great if trauma or neglect or dysfunction, serious dysfunction was a characteristic you feel if you're growing up. This is a great little workbook. All right, very practical. Okay, so I'm going to be borrowing because it might as well go right to the source. All right, when we're stressed, bottom line is it's not all or nothing. There's a graded response that happens internally and it happens to every one of us. You get that flush and then it finds its level. It's like water. And that response, that flush, that graded response you have gradually starts to activate systems in your brain and in your body. I've been telling you, be really careful the meaning you apply to things or the sense you make of things, all right? Because whatever you tell your brain is what your brain tells the rest of your body. So this is a validation of that. This system starts to permeate you, all right? That will heavily, heavily influence the options you can even conceive of for yourself. Now, the systems in your brain, the systems in your body, all right, <coughs> what happens then is they increase the more the stress level increases. So, but when you can reclaim calm, all right, that'll be reflected and you will be more able to determine where it's coming from and when you see where that stress that triggering is coming from now you can see the target right but as soon as you have any challenge for example let's say for instance in the case of hoarding or clutter you realize that time's running out you need to clear an area all right or you need to finish sorting. Sorting is an even more uh, complex process than just clearing an area, all right? Or you need just to clear a smaller space because company's coming. So that added stress of someone's gonna be in your environment. Sometimes that, that person who's gonna be in your environment is your landlord doing an annual inspection. All right. So what happens? Flash. You enter a state of alertness. Alertness is a good thing. It's a wake up call. All right. You start to scan the piles uh, that have felt insurmountable, that have felt bigger than you are. Or I'll get to it later. You've minimized it, whichever end of the spectrum you decided on. All right. Now you're trying to gauge, though, with how you feel, because you did, probably didn't plan this visit, all right, with how you feel, what is it going to take out of you to successfully complete even enough of the job to be good enough or just to even satisfy yourself. You know, when you set that goal, I'm going to clear that table. I'm going to clear that pathway. And you, you are looking at is how, how much do I have to do it? How completely do I have to do it to satisfy myself? Or sometimes, as I said, in the case of your landlord or 
could be a bylaw, um, property standards, could be the fire department. It could be um, sort of an enforcement agent as well. I know, you know, sometimes it has been the Humane Society where pets are involved. It's been children's aid. It's been services for the elderly. All right. You need home care. You need home services. And somebody has to come in first to determine that the environment is okay for the services coming in. So sometimes it isn't just about satisfying yourself. Sometimes it's also about whoever else you want and need to satisfy. That's a little tougher. So as the challenge, no, that's the perception of it is the first flush of alertness. That's a good thing. But as the challenge continues to happen, I want you to realize that you can only stay in that awakened alert stage a minimum amount of time. It's limited. All right. Your body now, that body mind system, it's got its own agenda. And now, depending on how long you're in that state of challenge, all right, you end up with a more intense, that, that level of alertness, that stage is becomes more and more intense. Now, if you run into challenges, has anybody here ever had something they had to do where there were no challenges? Because if that's true, I want your life. All right. Of course, it's part of the plan. It's part of the universe's plan for us. Oh, let's have a little fun with them. Let's have a little fun with her. Okay. So if things don't go well, according to your plan, your expectation, now you're headed for a whole different stage. Guess what it's called? What does it feel like? Does it feel like alarm bells going off? Where do you register the alarm bells? That's where you want, you want to not B, I'm doing this podcast for you so that you do not go into panic. You go into, oh, okay, when we get to this stage, now you know what? I'm going to start to become increasingly and increasingly disabled. All right, this system is not headed anywhere that's going to help me. I need to handle enough, even enough of it right now because. That alarm stage, just think of it. You're in a building. There is a crisis. The alarm goes off. All right. Really good example. You know the amber alert? All right. Think of the amber alert sound. Think of the fire alarm. What happens to you when you hit that alarm? Does anybody start running when that happens? What, what happens to you? brings you to a whoa, because when you're in that alarm stage, you are now totally occupied with the sound and the perceptions and the sensations of alarm. So as you start to feel that, where is that in your body that you start to feel and become aware of that? That's when you want to jump on it. Not when it has rushed through your whole body with cortisol or um, what's that other one? I'm having a brain drain here. When you get a rush, all right? Dopamine. Thank you. Thank you, Graham. And so by the time you're hooked and over flooded with that, you're not really operational. Right now, take out your pen and paper and write down where in your body, when something it gets the priority lifted, like but important lifted. This is not sort of I sit and made a cha make a choice and I make a plan and I'm all kumbaya about it. This is there is a point. Got to do it. Where do you register that energy? 
that response. That's a chemical response you're getting. I want you to practice this week. How many times in little bits or in bigger bits? Does that happen? And where does it happen? Because I want you to start getting control of that. That is your internal alarm system. That is the thing that tells you, okay, we're no fooling around here because it's not getting any better. At this point, it's all downhill. All right, it's all downhill. Mm, no, anything I can do to address enough of the problem that is causing this is moving forward. That's what I'm going to do because in the alarm stage, you get frozen. Okay, even Superman gets frozen. It's his kryptonite. All right. What's your kryptonite? And when you feel frozen, what happens? What happens when you feel frozen? I know when I feel that frozen, my thinking isn't linear. It isn't from, oh, I have a plan. Oh, and this is the next step. And what do I need? Oh, there it is over there. You end up in this confusion, not being sure. Even if you were sure before, in this phase that you have allowed to happen, you haven't worked to get a hold on, put the reins on it. Now you're not quite sure what to do. All right. Like chemically. This is not your downfall. This is the way this works. I want you to realize every time that you didn't follow through on something, some of the time that was your doing. That was a choice, all right? But a lot of the time, you seem to think that you have perfect control, all right? That it's everything is a choice. Well, it is ultimately a choice, but sometimes it's after you got dragged behind the truck, okay, of the chemical response in your body. Do you need that on top of everything else? All right. And it's human that, that to happen. That's not your failing. When I snapped the back of my knee and I, I had that moment of, boy, we went straight from alert to alarm. All right. Because I didn't have the information to figure out where am I and what do I need to do? Okay. Don't let that happen to you as often. So when you're not sure what to do, truth is you are temporarily in what's known as brain freeze. And it's got nothing to do with ice cream or popsicles. All right. It's got nothing to do with ice cream or popsicles. It is a normal process that is avoidable. It is manageable. From today's podcast, I want you to realize all right, we may run over. All right. So if things or your progress, because now you're on brain freeze, start to deteriorate further. Now, what stage do you think you're in now? We went from alert to alarm to brain freeze to anybody? Unmute yourself. Anybody? I would say decision as to what, if you stay frozen or act. I think at this point, San, that's optimistic. Just because this is now a chemical system in your body. All right. And at least temporarily, your highest probability is that you're going straight to fear. I know I did. I know I did when I heard that snap. And the better part of the night as I slept, I said, please, God, please, God, don't do that to me. Don't. I have a deep and abiding faith in God. I don't ask anybody else to. But I tell you, I talked to the big boy. He could just bail me out this one time. It was a really stupid move. I fully admit I shouldn't have, you know, whatever. I take responsibility, but, but fear fear will grasp you. This is also where another major component, this is not all bad news. There are ways around it, okay? 
there's also another major component of your stress response capability. And many of you have told me this happens, but you haven't used this word. And really and truly, this is at least in part what it is. Okay. It's dissociation. When you're afraid, brain free, you know what? Oh, there must be something. And you don't even plan it. There, that inadvertent distractibility, that, uh, and even if you've got ADHD, all right, it, all that means is that you major in this. All right. And that's okay. That's the way your brain works. But you have some say. For example, okay, just that first stage, you know, when you're just not quite there, wherever you should be mentally, okay, this is a stage where you're also likely to opt for distracting yourself from the fact that internally, you are overwhelmed, all right, and you're coming up, and remember this, when that chemical system, when those hormones hit your brain and you're in brain freeze, it takes time. Have you ever had snow on the roof in winter? Those of you who get winter, those of you who don't, you just got too much luck. <laughs> so think of the snow on your roof. All right, you got snow on your roof, that's the brain freeze. How long does it take for that snow to melt? Because in your system, once you let that system get a hold of you, all right, you have to process all of those hormones, all of those chemicals, all of it's now watering it down and letting it flow through your system with the cost physically, emotionally, all right, mentally, there's a cost to having all of that have to dissipate through you. Internally, while that process is happening, your whole body's distracted. Your system is dysregulated, all right? And if you interpret those feelings, be careful the meaning you give it, Understand it for what it is. It's a natural system your body has to keep you alive and keep you safe. However, you are being triggered by a system that is not so much survival, by the meaning you're applying to it, by the fact that maybe you've waited until the deadline is right at your feet. Okay. All right, so you become increasingly convinced what? This is bigger than I am. I can't get started. I can't get started. It's And we go to old things. I don't know how many times when I don't want to do something and I don't want to do it right now. I've said to myself, you know, I don't think my back's doing that well. Then I had to learn that that was going to be the story of my life if I didn't stop that, because my back was never going to be a whole lot better. It was me having to learn to live with whatever the challenge I have is. What are the challenges you have? And are you going to let them deprive you? Or are you going to get a handle on some of those and manage them before they manage you? All right. So you get in that state of increasingly convinced you can't get started, <clears throat> be careful you don't interpret that as not feeling motivated. I know almost no one, all right, almost no one, not just clients, personally, whatever, all right, who when they had to get started at something, felt motivated. Feeling motivated doesn't get factored in. So when you tell yourself, I just don't feel motivated, you're waiting for a train that isn't coming. 
starting. Hear me, hear me when I say this. This is true for you. This is true for me. This is true for practically every person I know, except those super, super A-type personalities that nobody likes. <laughs> okay, so, and if you're a super, super A, I'm just teasing. All right, so, not a factor in feeling motivated that's when I want you to stop and say to yourself, do I want to move forward or do I want to move back? Because at this point, it's a choice. Do I want things to get the tiniest bit better, alleviate a little, or do I want to just be dragged right into chaos? Because no matter how you feel, no matter how unmotivated you feel, all right, there is something, some small first step that you can do. The question isn't, are you motivated? The question is, with the, the resources that I feel I have, that I'm aware of, what one small thing can I do to move forward? I had to do that as I waited to find out really what the heck I'd done to the back of my leg one month before I'm leaving for Uganda. <clears throat> that was a rough night, I'll tell you. All right. What could I do? I could not make it any worse. I could not go to imagining, oh, you know, I've ruptured the da 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 and then have all of that to process. I said to myself, because I've made myself do this, it's not easy. All right, Every, we all have the same feelings. I said to myself, don't go to fear, go to facts. We don't have the facts. You do not know enough about the physiology of your body to know what this is. So don't go to fear. It will be what it will be and we'll deal with it the best we can. We'll deal with reality. Not alone. <laughs> We'll get help, but because you're never alone. So never waste your energy, mental, physical, emotional, or spiritual on fear. Unless you've got the end of life sitting right in front of you in some concrete way. All right. That's what your system is designed to help you with. Always go to facts. Where are the facts and who has them? And I had a wonderful appointment very early the next morning with a wonderful nurse practitioner at the clinic that I go to. And she put me on to the best physio that I was with this morning at seven o'clock. And you know what? I'm on a path. I'm on a path and I'm going to be just fine. All right. Same can happen for you if you just don't waste your time imagining every horrible outcome, okay? Because your brain wants to work for you. Your brain at the same time you're going down the fear thing and getting brain freeze and staying there, all right? Your brain is continually, your system, your, your senses are continually trying to monitor the situation in front of you. And they are constantly, whether you're aware of it or not, absorbing data, things that will help, things that won't help. The data I got was, you know what? You can lie here all night and fuss about it, Elaine. It's not going to change anything. It is what it is. We don't know what that is. But what's the probability this is the worst case scenario? Not extremely high. All right. You'd be an emerge with all its challenges. All right. So your brain is helping you determine whether it makes sense to fight or not fight. Can you win the fight, whatever the fight is? Your brain is going data collection, trying to put all the little tiles in place. So if you're off in your own fantasy of fear and now it's got to handle these the, the uh, chemistry in your body as well because it's running rampant, you're disabling yourself. How many people here 
are prepared to commit themselves that the next time they have an uncertainty that is threatening or negative enough, they are willing to try putting themselves on pause, just making themselves go on pause and not go to fear. You're going you're gonna to experience it. You're going to experience a little of it, but you stop it and you say, I need facts here. Fear is not going to solve anything. I need facts. Who has the information I need? All right. So while you're struggling with things around you, the sensation of watching this happen, all right, if you let this get out of control, all right, is pretty much like you're watching a movie happen about you, but you're not, you're in it, but you're also out of it. It's a little like an out of body experience. All right. So you're likely, you're likely in that state to just robotically be compliant with the urges. I'm asking you not to be compliant with the urges. I'm asking you to get the handles out right away and hold on to pause. Fight the fear. I'm going to get evicted. I'm, they're going to call Children's Aid. They're going to call the Humane Society. They're going to call whatever. I'm going to get a blast. That may or may not be true, but there are always solutions to that. There's always help available. And you, if you become robotically compliant, you're not using the data that you're receiving, all right? These stressful challenges are right in front of you, all right? And basically, in this dissociative state, you've kind of given up the control wheel, all right? So what happens? In that state, your heart rate is likely to drop. That's really going to work for you. Do you think that'll work for you or against you? All right. Instead of all of your blood going to your muscles to help you, and the brain is a muscle, all right, fight or flee. Fight is not go to fear. Flee is go to fear. All right. You constrict the peripheral blood flow. So now the outer extremities um, aren't on your side or you don't feel they are. They're not as accessible and helpful to you. All right. You might even get a little lightheaded. Has anybody ever known anyone to faint under stress? I personally haven't, but. I know it can happen. All right. Do you want to be anywhere on that trajectory? Have I belabored you enough with the fact that never go to fear, go to fact? All right. Because that dissociative state is not an entirely bad option. Not entirely bad. None of our reactions are entirely bad but out of their context that they were intended for. That dissociative state is only useful when it allows you to cocoon inside yourself in your own, your own awareness, your inner, your kind of inner, inner world. And it sends out your own body's version of opioids. All right. Some of those are endorphins and some of them are things I can't pronounce. I'm not a medical person, right? So those are your natural painkillers. And you, something happens to you while you're watching it, all right? That dissociative state protects you against only. It's, it's healthy and doable, where you are facing absolute, inescapable, unavoidable distress or pain, all right? It's your mind and your body's protection measure. It's the protection, self-protection, where you just disappear in yourself. 
all right? Because fighting is futile. So you slip into your own little inner world. Now, for a second, let's go back to the infant. Remember the infant a few podcasts ago? Because this is where we are. We're in that same state. All right. So for the infant, and at that point, we are like an infant, all right, who has a disengaged, abusive, unwilling parent, that infant's fight or flight response is to cry. But if no one comes, or they come and they're angry and disengaged, we like that helpless infant will dissociate to survive the inescapable distress of being abandoned in our vulnerability. That's even more of a reason, people. Don't go to fear. Go to fact. Put yourself on pause. Develop the skill of being able to put yourself on pause so you don't hyper discourage yourself needlessly and convince yourself that that's reality and the truth. There's nothing you can do and you waste a lot of energy. All right. You waste the opportunities. If you go to fact or you search for accredited fact sources, you are arming yourself. And when you feel more capable and more resourced, you will make immensely better options, even when you're just at the thinking stage. And you will prevent yourself from making whatever this situation is that brings you to me every week worse. You'll prevent yourself from doing that. That is something that we can all do. All right. All right. So. So we've talked about the the hormones going through your body, the fact that they are like opioids. Um, The other thing that can happen when you're in a semi. A semi dissociative state or a fully dissociative state is your sense of time dissolves. Okay, have you ever been sitting somewhere or standing somewhere and you just feel like you've just come out of a fog like you just woke up but you weren't asleep okay and you ask yourself what time what time and then where did the time go anybody ever do that that is like a semi-induced dissociative state all right and we can do it in very agreeable ways as well all right we can dissociate when we're overwhelmed with clutter when we're overwhelmed with decision making when we're overwhelmed by any other challenge in our life that seems here are the key things it seems but it isn't all right insurmountable and it seems like that it's never ending So it's like pointless to even start, right? All right, but how can it be pointless to start? How can it be pointless to start? What can you do when you convince yourself, oh, there's so much? Tell me this, the next time, any of you feel that way, I want you to stop. Put yourself on pause just for a minute. And no matter what the situation is, clutter or anything else, I want you to ask yourself this one question. Did this happen one thing at a time? Or did I go to bed and I woke up in the morning and I got inundated by clutter or something? It's just I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it came from. Okay. Or did it happen one thing at a time? So if I got, I have the answer for you. It happened one or very few things at a time. Because I don't know anybody. I, I know 
and I've done this for 21 and a half years. I have never met a person who said, you know what? Yay, it's done. Look at all the clutter. Okay, I've never had anybody say that. It happens one thing, one choice, one decision, or not decision, or a very few at a time. So what's wrong with it undoing itself one thing at a time? That's how it happened. All right. Just because you have a bigger problem, the best way to go about it is one thing at a time. Yes, it can take forever. It can seem that way. It won't. It feels that way. Remember, whatever you actively do is never wasted. Whatever you actively tell yourself to give yourself permission to not do that one tiny thing you can do, that contributes to the problem. That keeps the problem. And nothing says it has to be cleared up all at once. All right. Nothing says that. Is there anyone here who believes that this problem that created over time, I mean, even if your landlord's coming in, even if the fire department's coming in, they're not going to be able to undo it one at a at bulks at a time. All right. Is there anybody here who is in such a dangerous situation? All right. That it has to all go. Is there anybody? It doesn't all have to go. Safety corridors first, which is why in January we're going to work practically from the book. Because Christmas, <laughs> Christmas is a very uh, likely time that uh, people will get distracted or they will reacquire. Um, so when you're feeling overwhelmed, do one thing at a time. That's how it was created. All right. So it makes sense and it won't take forever. It will feel like that. But feelings are, and and please don't look at how much more there is to do. All right. Please don't um, do that. You're just disabling yourself. Start. The two methods are the hummingbird method, Swiss cheese. You just reach in and anything you've got, you resolve. I personally think the better method, just for the way the human spirit works, is to pick one corner, unless it's the safety corridor. If it's a safety corridor, you have to handle the safety corridor. Start in one corner and one thing at a time, make a decision. Either take that thing, Make a decision about what's going, what your relationship with it is. Do you absolutely love it? Is it a jewel? Is it something that in a perfect world you'd like to keep if you had enough space? Or can you let that thing go? Can you share it? Can you do something else with it? That means you don't have to store it. All right. One thing at a time. And if you're going to keep it, take the thing and go and put it as close to where things of its kind would normally go. Yes, you may be making a pile bigger there. That's not a problem, so long as it's not a health or safety hazard. All right. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Because when we get to that point, you can we can solve it then. We can make room. Probably something there is going to free up space and be either relocated gone or some other palatable solution so all right let me see what we've got here so now I want to get into a little bit about perfectionism all right I have had people who knew that they needed to make progress but adamantly despite the fact that they were creating this clutter, this buildup, all right, adamantly held on to the fact it had to happen a particular way and that a solution would not make sense. 
All right, anybody ever been in that position? Okay. Do you have access to the book Procrastination and the chapter on perfectionism? Because there probably are six good ways to do anything. And the point is to get it done and to have the outcome be, you don't know that book? Okay, Procrastination by Jane Burka and Lenora Ewan. Okay, I'm going to get it right now. It is Together with Conquer the Clutter. It is a perfect marriage. If you don't have Conquer the Clutter, um, I'm going to suggest that um, you get, if you can, if, if you can absorb information auditorily, I'm going to suggest you get the audiobook because the audiobook has um, a dedicated website just for um, the audiobook with all the tools, resources. They are PDF downloadable. Please don't. You have a lifetime of access to that website and they're interactive and tabulatable, most of them, to to prevent you from having to print them off. And you can track your success, your progress, your setbacks, relapse, whatever it is, you can track yourself there in real time. This is the other book that I think is the Bible. Procrastination, Why You Do It and What to Do About It Now by Jane Burka, B-U-R-K-A and Lenora Ewan. All right. There is nothing you need to know about procrastination. There is nothing possible more that you would need to know than this book. And I didn't write it. All right. But it's it's got it is the Bible uh, as far as I'm concerned on procrastination and perfectionism. So when you hold on to I'm going this needs to happen, but it needs to happen this way. If that way isn't working. OK. Shake it off. Do whatever you can to shake off the need that it makes sense because there probably is another way that you can't see the connections that actually will get the job done more simply. All right. Okay. Let's see here now. Somehow. Things jumped. Okay. Um, so we've lost our sense of time. And you experience things like they take minutes. Okay. But then you come to and you realize that in that time, you've been trapped in a timeless moment. All right. Like you don't even know where you've been. I know somebody who... Uh, goes online and shops because they're bored or they're stressed or they are something that feels unmanageable. All right. And it's hours later when they come to and they weren't asleep and they've purchased an awful lot that they can't afford. All right. Now they've got two problems. Well, an additional problem. So Watch out when you find yourself facing an issue and then you find yourself retreating to the couch. Be really sure, all right, that you're not in or going into a disconnected state. That distraction can be a way of just going to a different place. There are no solutions there. All right. Don't set yourself back. There are no solutions there. All right. OK. So and the whole time, remember your system, your body, your mind, they are kind of surveying for watching how to get out of this situation. <clears throat> how many people here? have or have had difficulties 
chronically being present in their own life. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? All right. That can happen even when you feel social threats. It's one of um, the reasons behind um, people pleasing. You're buying peace. All right. Especially um, when there is an element of competitiveness. And that competitiveness doesn't have to be your competitiveness. All right. You can be competitive with yourself, but you can also end up in an unhealthy um, exchange or relationship with someone else who is competitive. All right. And how many people here would call themselves um, people pleasers? Okay. Have you ever asked yourself what that serves for you? Anybody ever ask themselves, mm -hmm. what does that give you? Can anybody put the thought down super present within the extended system to me? External work or creating, okay, caregiving for others. How many people here would actually say that they would do, like we're talking consistently, more for others, but they couldn't do it for themselves? How many hands up? Hands up. Use your little symbol so I can see it. Okay. Is that working for you? Who comes out of the people pleasing? You come out safe, er, hopefully. But how many times do you not ask yourself what it's costing you? Is it costing you a part of yourself? Is it costing you the right to have your own space, to have your own thoughts, to have your own reactions? And that the other person come halfway and respect the fact that you're entitled to your space. You're entitled to your thoughts, your opinions, informed opinion. I'm of the opinion that informed opinions beat the right to any opinion, but sometimes an informed opinion is work that we don't have time or the impetus to do. So... What is it costing you to be a people pleaser? Huh? Oh, I have some more down there. Let me open up the chat and just see, because in that desire to, you know, the, the fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, well, people pleasers are fawners and free and pleasers. Okay. So fight, flight, fawn, freeze. And when you revert, when you accept people pleasing as a principle of your life, all right, what you're really trying to do, I believe, is to give the other person what they want when really what's needed so that you don't have to compensate and make up that personal uh, integrity part of yourself. Um, the loss you feel at constantly giving away. Now, that may be gratifying in the short term, but it's not going to work well for you in the long term. All right. When really negotiating for what each of you want. So every, but nobody gets exactly what they want, but each of you gets enough of what you want and you negotiate that. All right. People pleasing is never a win-win situation. It's a win-lose situation every single time at your expense, no matter how safe it makes you feel, no matter how good it makes you feel. Part of you is being denied, all right? 
So the key point there is that all of us tend to gravitate toward what will make us safe or what is familiar. What right now on your paper with your pen, please write down what is familiar about clutter. What is familiar from the past? Where is that continuity? What, what is, what is familiar? All right. Now ask yourself, so it's familiar. I know the dance steps. I know how to do this. It's easier, you know. It'll make me feel like I'm making some progress. Now ask yourself how many times, we're not talking about giving gifts to people or doing favors and being kind. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when there was a challenge and you gave it away. You bought peace. All right. Now ask yourself how many times that worked out in a healthy way for you. How many times you walked away feeling anything other than thank heavens that argument's over. Thank heavens. Uh, uh. You bought peace. Has it ever had a destructive influence on you? Buying peace. Or in the balance, it cost you way more than it gave you. Here's the reason. And I'll go to the chat box in just a second. Here, we're going to finish on this thought. Every time you give away a piece of who you are, all right, it just kind of, you trade it off. You don't meet your primary needs. You don't insist on being treated. Even when you're 100% wrong, you, you are treated with courtesy and respect, dignity at least. All right. Every time you do that, you chip a little piece of yourself away. All right. You chip a little piece of yourself away. Where do you think you find it again? Hmm? You either find it in the acquiring that can lead to clutter, or you find it in the security that you didn't have in those relationships by holding on to things just in case. Where you need it is you need it in yourself. You need it in yourself. You don't need it in piles. It's of absolutely no use to you in piles. No matter how pretty or expensive the piles are, there will never be enough. If it has come at the cost of you being true to yourself and insisting that even if others aren't true to you, they at least treat you with courtesy, dignity, and respect. Even when you're wrong, you can be 100% wrong. You're still entitled to courtesy, dignity, and respect. Okay? Now I want you to look at the piles that are around you today. All right? Make a point of it. And I want you to ask yourself, what are you giving me? What are you giving me? And how in heaven's name did you get there? And what does it replace? Does it replace someone I miss? Does it replace a relationship? Does it replace my sense of important status that I matter? Does having it just in case make me feel safer? Somehow I'm protected or prepared against the vagaries of life? When you've got piles of it, you won't be able to find it. It's of no use to you. You won't be able to find it. You are not safer. So after Christmas, when I get back, we're going to start going through chapters of Conquer the Clutter. All right. And we're going to, I want 
everybody to show up. And I want everybody to use the information that week to set three goals for yourself. One, having to do with the work that needs to be done. Not more important, as important as in that week, finding real joy, fun, and play. Some people need to practice that because it's not a habit you formed. All right? Because you're not entitled to joy, fun, and play when the work's not done. Listen, this is not Saturday morning and your chores and you are not children. Every day there's work to be done, boring work to be done to maintain life. There is joy, fun, and play that is happening around you free of charge every moment of every day. What you focus on, all right, be aware of the negative. Be aware of it. Factor it in. But also, for heaven's sakes, don't focus on it and make it the main event and miss the joy and fun. And I want everybody to plan one, at least one thing. Well, let's just say one thing in case you happen to be very creative. Okay, we don't want to get into multiples. So one thing that in the week after the podcast, you can engage in that reminds you that you are a growing, learning, developing human being. All right. And I may even, with your permission, I may even assign some reading so that when you come back the next week, we can have a discussion about it. All right, we can have a discussion about it. We unmute and hands up and whoever's hand goes up first. Or, all right. Okay, now I'm going to open up the chat. I'm really curious. We have 61 chat messages. All right, bear with me if you can. Read back to the top. Or conquer the gorilla. Oh, I don't think we... that might not be well received. Conquer the gorilla. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I was a little mystified about why we needed two armed guards. And I was pretty sure that I didn't want to be present if it was because the elephants were aggressive. What were you going to do? Shoot the elephant? Like, no. Then I found out it's really not about the elephants. Okay, challenges doesn't mean the gorillas, though. No, it doesn't, but it does say gorilla tracking. And you know what? The challenges may not be the gorillas. The challenges may be at 74, getting to the gorillas in one piece. All right, there are going to be challenges. And I'm going to do my level best to knock them out of the park. There may be the occasional one that knocks me out of the park, but we deal with it. That's life. That's what I want to show you. All right. When you can't do it the way you think it should be done or it needs to be done or you'd like to see it done, would be meaningful if it could be done that way. Is there another way to do it that maybe doesn't shine as brightly, but you know what? Gave you enough of what you needed. conquer my fear no kidding crystal <laughs> there's something about that python <laughs> there's something about that python in the trees yes and apparently trucks stop to let them cross the road okay i'll be i will be well and truly in a sealed truck um elaine amidst the gorillas that's great claudia elaine amidst the gorillas I'm hoping for that one. I am hoping for that one. Conquer the gorillas would be good since it's plural. That is true. That is true. And there's the famous quote that when you're wrestling a gorilla, a challenge, you don't stop when you're done. You stop when the gorilla is tired. <laughs> That's cute. Is that really a famous saying? Okay. 
uh, Shoshana, Elaine, you may want to put a tracker in. Yeah, you know what? Hafsa said that. A tracker in my suitcase. You may not get your suitcase in time, but you'll know where it is. Perhaps less stress. That is so true. That is so true. I'm just hoping I can remember the, the um, passcode on the darn thing. Um, I went to catch up on the Perry book sections and they're not listed with the podcast. Um, Braden's mother's ill. And so he hasn't gotten the latest podcasts edited and listed. Um, and Buzzsprout that does the, I guess, I don't know how they're associated, but I pay them to be associated. Um, they will only let him um, post, I think it's, 12 hours a month all right you can't even pay them to just do a dump so hang hang on um christina yes i use the title app it's wonder the tile app okay good um graham i was challenged today with my daily focus of what are the oh, that's good that is good graham what are the assumptions that I hold about my situation? Yes. What are you telling yourself? Because that's the meaning you're giving it. That is the hill you are making yourself climb. Make sure you're climbing the right hill. Okay, because you can make a mountain when it's not a mountain by what you tell yourself and the meaning you give it. How might I challenge that assumption? Well, how might you challenge that assumption? I would say stand back like I did the other night and say to yourself, what am I feeling right now? All right, fear. Okay, I'm feeling fear like, boy, this is the whole thing on the line right now. And what did I do? No, we're not doing that. We are not doing fear. All right, not going to give us anything. The truth is the truth. So what are the facts? And at that point, I had to say to myself, roll over and go to sleep again. You need to be rested because tomorrow you're going to learn the facts. And then we're going to have to build a plan around the facts. I didn't personally have the medical background to know the facts. All right. But always ask yourself, what are the facts on this? What are the observables about this situation? And what are the patterns what are the patterns that I'm following? And does that work for me? Or is it working against me enough of the time I need to look at it? Who has better information about this? Sometimes that's counseling. Sometimes that's the podcast. Sometimes it's getting the book and reading the book first or going to the library and getting the book. All right. Where is better information available on the subject that is troubling me, specific to the subject? Yeah, so I have been vaccinated against everything known to man. Um, <laughs> for the travel vaccines, um, yeah, I think there was one that I didn't take because it was hep B, and I thought there was no likelihood that I'm coming in contact with anybody's bodily fluids. So I might just save myself that one. Okay. So yeah, Ebola is is one of the ones. Um, what was it called? I didn't have it on speaker view, so I missed it. Are you talking about the book, Christine? Yeah, I think the other person answered it was the adverse childhood experience. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, this one here. The workbook. Yeah. Yep. Cool. But don't get the workbook if you're not going to do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> having a collection of books is not the same as having the books you need that you work. Guilty. <laughs> okay. Take a picture of it. Go go on Amazon, take a picture of it on your cell phone or whatever, and say, I'll get back to this when this is done and I have time and energy. It'll just become something that gets lost. All right. Okay. And you'll beat yourself up for not following through. 
Mm. For me, it's alertness, sheer panic. So you go very quickly from alert, all right, to sheer panic. All right. That may be, Graham, that may be because you don't feel adequately resourced on whatever it is that's causing the panic. However, panic is not going to solve it, though. All right. Be very, very careful, though, that you don't have such a meticulously perfectionistic high standard of what is adequate knowledge, all right, or information that it doesn't actually exist. Some of the sources I use when I need something, the Mayo Clinic, the Cleveland Clinic, all right, and generally what they say is a good starting point for me to ask more intelligent questions about what the problem is I'm having or a client is having. So I want you to have an image, people, that if you go straight to dissociate, dissociative, or you go straight to panic, I want you to imagine you're in a car, in a field, all right, and you're stuck in the mud. All right. And it's raining. The ground is very soft and you need to get out of the rut. You need to get out of the mud. So what do you do? Hold on to the wheel and step on the gas? Would anybody do that? Please do this. No, I would not do that. Okay. Why would you not do that? Because you're digging yourself in deeper. All right, you're just digging yourself in deeper. Not only that, you are spreading and spraying mud all over the place. So the analogy when you do that to yourself is you are that panic is just a never ending source of fear. All right. Fear, 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 fear. You never got out of anything by fear. Nobody ever got anything because you need to be at a, just slightly above the fear to have enough of your brain cells left over that you can pick up the data and you know what to do with it because your system is still body, mind, body and emotions are picking up data from the surrounding thing that's overwhelming you. All right. You can't deal with it. It's all just mud sprayed all over the place. If you go to panic, try saying something very simple to yourself. As soon as you feel it starting, this goes nowhere. Talk out loud. I'm a firm believer, okay, in talking to yourself out loud, not on buses. But yeah, I don't want the little guys with the white goats coming for me. So just that, you know, Elaine, this isn't, this is not going to get us where we need to be. What do I need right now? I need better information. Is that available to me? Not easily. Okay. You have the internet. That's dangerous stuff. What are credible sources on the internet about? All right. And start there. Even though that is not the whole answer. It's better than swimming in fear. All right. Well, thank you, Leslie. So podcast app. Oh, I am going to try when I'm away. I don't think I can do it. I'll pre-record the first podcast uh, because it happens while I'm flying. Um, but the next one, I'm going to try to do live from Uganda. Now, if it turns out, I don't know, and I will have, I will have gorilla tracked by them. Um, if it turns out that they don't have an adequate bandwidth or whatever it is, um, last result will be I'll get Braden to cut some of the footage from and, and that's going to be on the internet. It's going to be on the on our uh, virtual consulting YouTube channel. It's going to be on, on Instagram. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be all over the place. All right. Footage every day. 
of what she done today um, and how deep up to her hip waders is she? All right. So I'm going to try to do it live, though, because I think that would be really exciting. And I'm also going to interview the uh, Uganda Wildlife Authority um, and the rangers and the guides about like true stories. Uh, I almost spit out my coffee. <laughs> Don't do that. One more thing to clean up. Um, okay, let me see, see. Oh, Carrie had to sign off. Her internet's conked out on her. Um, what are we doing? Fear. I had the right, I had the answer right when I said frozen. Yes, you did. Distraction. Let me just see if there's anything in it. Um, light bulb moment. My distraction morphs into self-soothing behavior. Mm, that's, that's a biggie. Do you know I had a very interesting experience? I've been following keto for quite a while now, somewhat successfully. I had a very interesting and awakening experience just to show you what you put in your body, as well as thoughts and the chemistry you let roll through it. And there was nothing keto um, that was easily available for dinner one night. But John, our buddy, had made a homemade fettuccine and uh, with a little butter and Parmesan cheese. And so I had a small bowl of that. And you know what? I was alarmed at how happy and complete and content I was and the world was a wonderful place and what problems all right and I thought oh wow we've got more than endorphins and and other things running through our system food though San just as you mentioned here food can be so just make it healthy but self-soothing. Yeah. The other day I'm coming back. I'm still trying to lose a little weight so I don't injure any of those African guys. Should I have to use the sedan chair? And uh, I've got eight of them now. They're going to work in rotation apparently. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't want the sedan chair. That's what I said. My biggest hope, I'm paying for it. I'm paying you. That's fine. But the bottom line is, I don't want the sedan chair. I don't want to ever have to use it. So I, I know. Well, Time will tell. Um, so anyway, I'm sitting there and I thought to myself, self, I said, as I went by the Dairy Queen. And I thought, oh, and you know, then what I said to myself, the last time I started to look at the, th the little distractions you give yourself just unceremoniously. And I thought to myself, the ice cream is half baked. All right. Like it's not great. It's not Kawartha Lakes ice cream. All right. And the chocolate is basically um, wax. Yeah. I had them do a Sunday uh, one time. It was a, a, a chocolate dip cone. And so where I'm going with this art, right, but I'll tell you this little story and then Braden can cut it out. Okay. So I'm, driving along I've got the temptation I'm like could you know no really you got calorie you've been so good and I know the whole thing and then I said yeah okay why would you waste it on that remember the last time you were there and you had the cone in the cup and then you had them pour the chocolate around it okay part of the fun is to kind of snap the chocolate off the cone right and catch it before it hits your lap and when I was eating it out of the cup, I realized I've had wax that was better than this. Like, it's mostly wax. And then I decided, so as I'm going by, I'm thinking, no, you're not settling for that. You know what? It's either 11 on the scale of 1 to 10, in which case you might consider it. But these promises that don't deliver, no, I'm not doing it. So I invite you to identify this week the promises that don't deliver for you. What are the promises that don't deliver for you? And why are you still accepting them? And maybe some of the things that you're telling yourself 
about what's in those piles. Just, you don't have to do anything, but start telling yourself your own truth about that. And if it's fear, afraid to let it go, afraid of this, whatever it is, never go to fear. Let's find the facts on it. And that way you keep the jewels, the things that actually do deliver what they promise. And the other stuff can go. I will see you next week. And I'll be asking you the answer to that question. Come prepared. Take care, everybody. It's been great. Bye now.